What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five with my man Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through with tonight's Wednesday big MLB slate. And uh, as Sheets pointed out to me before we started recording, that uh, on FanDuel the the, the lock time is five thirty Eastern, so we will go live at five Eastern and uh, take care of it that way. You know, and, and again, I'll be in Discord the rest of the night if any other questions pop up because we'll probably maybe, maybe we'll come maybe we'll come back at six or something too. Sure. I don't know. Hopefully, I'm, I'm open to that completely. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a nice big slate kind of, kind of weird that FanDuel did that in my opinion, cause there's plenty of other games to go with, but, uh, yeah. Um, well, what, I, what DraftKings did again, they just read it out and, and they put like no game. See, it's right. in a, in a it's weird. That's what I would have done. Uh, personally. And, and, and initially what they had last night, I noticed that like half the teams were all read it out. Like, so right. keep an eye out too. Like this. Yeah, it's weird to say this, but in basketball, I guess with that storm that there there's potentially some other stuff that could happen that, that I'm that I that I saw earlier today, but I don't know how real that is. Um, but but just just I'll, we'll, I'll follow up on that later today. But we'll definitely be there at five for you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a big day. We're going to be doing a, a, a PGA show after this, and we had a day off. Uh, we don't need to talk about politics. I just want to say I'm very frustrated that the tw- props 27 and 26 didn't pass in California. Uh, legalized gaming would have been wonderful. So now I guess all the offshore corporations make all the money from Californians instead of California actually getting the money back, but uh, hopefully get it back in the next couple of years. Anyway, Sheets, how you doing? And uh, I would usually say, how'd you do yesterday? But there's nothing we didn't, there was nothing to do. Yeah, I, 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 won, I, won a few, I won a few hundred in hockey. I did. Okay. Uh, not bad. Keep the wind streak and, alive. Uh, what? Keep the low, the wind streak going. Yeah. And I'm ready to tackle the, uh, the oh, this NBA monster tonight. All right. Let's get into it. Um, let's, why don't we get your screen up? I guess we'll start off with the Dallas Orlando game and oh, on DraftKings, it's not a game. So I didn't, question, even you want to play? You can, I didn't even look at it, but you can, you can tell me what you, when you think of that game, I guess. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at it right now. And, and basically like on, on FanDuel, which assuming that this game just stays on, just stays on FanDuel, which I can't see why anybody changes. It. It's too confusing for the users. Um, I don't like, like I could see going either way with this. I I have absolutely no problem playing Luca. I'm wondering where the ownership goes though. Like it's going to be, I will will tell you, first of all, I I just pulled up FanDuel just for a second, Mm -hmm. my sheets and I'm getting the top overall value on the slate is Dwight Powell at center power four at 3,600. I don't know where, where, where it's coming from, but that that's, I literally just pulled it up and this is what I see. So I don't know who's out or who, whatever, because he's power forward eligible. But if you do play FanDuel, that is a decision you, I think you're going to have to make right off the bat, uh, whether you want to do that or not. So it's something to look at. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. The only problem with the with a guy like Powell for me is we, we've seen this. Like he's played, he's been, he's, he's got, so his minutes have come back. He, he's come back, first of all. Um, I guess that's being the main part of it. He's gotten some of his minutes back. Uh, still, you know, it, it could still be a Kleba thing. It could be, uh, they play JaVale still. They're still starting JaVale as of right now, but he's only playing for like a few minutes a game. So it sort of feels like he's the de facto starting center Powell, but we just have gone through this so many times with him. And just because it's an early game with a huge gap between other games and there's other good plays on the slate. And is he power forward eligible? And for some reason I'm, I'm having trouble yes. calling up. The yes. 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 Yeah. So that's a little trickier. Um, I, I, I generally am inclined to fade it in this kind of a matchup against teams that play multiple bigs, probably the time you'd want to, you'd want to consider it a little stronger. So Dwight Powell and Luca are, are to me the main plays that are showing up. Or, do you have anybody else who who you've got projected in there that, that that you know on the Orlando side? No, nothing. But yeah, I mean, uh, look. By the way, Bancaro is 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 absolutely awesome, and I never am going to argue with anybody playing him. I mean, he just he looks well, better and better. I mean, the crazy thing is this this guy looks like Tatum with potentially like what could end up being more athleticism. He's so good. Uh, well, well, I'll tell you not to confuse the issue here, but but it, I think he might not be playing. He, he might be out. I mean, he's questionable. I think. Yeah, um, I have him as in right now, but but again, if he's out, that does open up some things, and of course, we'll know early enough because this game starts okay. before everything else. But uh, yeah, if, if he's if he's out, the only guys with him in, I think that I think that Jalen Suggs is is fine. Um, I don't think I want to use my center spot with Bull Bull, but not a bad – like, I think the price is fine. I think Jalen Suggs is the only guy I'd want. But if if he's out, I think that you can – you know, guys like Wagner, Suggs, and Carter, probably, honestly, for me, still probably just Suggs that really stands out. Maybe you could argue for Terrence Ross as a as a flyer or if they started Okiki because he's cheap. But for the most part, I think no matter what, it's just going to be Suggs on the Orlando side for me. And even that one is only probably if Paolo is out. 
Um, I, I just don't know what to do with the, the, the Powell thing. I don't, it feels fishy, but it, they play multiple bigs. So maybe it's the time where he gets extra run still doesn't always do anything, but you know, is it maybe a mistake to play him over Kleba even like, I don't even know that he's a better play than Kleba. So I, I personally will probably stay away from it, but I don't know. I'm going back and forth in my mind right now on it, but it's only on FanDuel anyway. Uh, and of course, as always, Luca is not is firmly in play. Uh, going to break records for the highest usage rate of all time. It's pretty interesting that when when Westbrook does that, everybody rips him apart for everything he can't do. Westbrook was a much better shooter the year he was going off with with the high usage rate than than Luca has been. And I think everybody thinks Luca's this great shooter, and he's not shot the ball well at all this year, and he's still putting up ridiculous numbers. He's going to win the MVP. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much the whole game. I, I think it's just Luca, and, and then we'll see who else is playing uh, and see how the starting lineup shakes out for for Dallas, I guess, and and Orlando, depending on if Paolo plays. Really tough to analyze that one without knowing about uh, Paolo because he does have so much usage for them. All right, uh, what do you got on uh, what do you got next here on the DraftKings side of it? Portland, Charlotte. What what, what, what are do. you looking at in this game? Do me a favor. Can you just pause for just a sec? No problem. Yeah, so you you, got, you see a lot of Q tags next to the Portland players. My assumption is that every one of them is probably playing. Um, I, I have them all as probable, and I think yeah. that. With a day off, I, I don't see why. They're, also, they're they, they're trying to get that that they're trying to, to 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 get some wins early in the season to rack up. I think that you know there is some blowout risk in this game because Charlotte's so bad. But uh, I, what do what do you got for Portland? Because they everybody looks like they may be a little too cheap, but they're also all healthy for the first time except for Simons. They're they're, they're all healthy, and we haven't seen that much. So so what do you got here for 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 Portland and Charlotte? The only guy I have is as playable on my list in this game is, um, is Terry Rozier Ooh. Um, at 7,800. I uh, have him as a pretty strong play. Um, it's pretty much all I have from this game. Yeah. And, and I was looking at the FanDuel pricing. It's a little cheaper um, for everybody over there. Uh, I love uh, for the match matchup wise. I don't think you can get much better for Nurkic than you can in this, in this particular matchup. Um, and uh yeah, I mean, I, I I just think he could absolutely smash here. So I, he's probably my highest level of of, of interest. And uh, I don't mind. Dame is 85 on FanDuel. And I, I go through it all the time about how people think that he's a much better play because he's cheaper over there. Just want to remind everybody, he turns the ball over. He doesn't get steals and blocks. That's just a, a – so 8,500, while it looks like a much better price, it's not as much better than you think. And, and the, the 9,200, I think, is completely viable. This is the kind of game where he could put up easily in the 50s or 60s. So both those guys are on my list. Um, and I also think that Josh Hart in these kind of matchups, I, the, the, thing, the, the guy I don't like to play Hart with when, when everybody's healthy is Nurkic, actually, because one of the great things that Hart does, he's one of the best rebounders in the NBA um, for a guard. And he, I mean, he's literally like he averages nine rebounds a game. And, and you just think, so they kind of negatively correlate as Nurkic gets a lot of his fantasy points from rebounding. If you look at their game logs, you'll see Nurkic with a big game and then you'll see uh, Hart with a big rebounding game. So because of all that, um, yeah, I'm probably going to lean lean to Nurkic as my favorite play. Um, if I had to pick anybody else, it would be it'd be Hart and followed by Lillard as just a flyer, just because of the game environment. And on the uh, Charlotte side, I have absolutely zero problem with Terry Rozier, and that you get a little Dennis Smith Jr. revenge, even though it's at home. Um, I'm not probably going to do that, but just wanted to throw it out there that I don't think it's a bad play. Uh, he's, you know, Dennis Smith, when he plays minutes is going to put up fantasy points. So I'm, uh, I'm okay with that, but I don't feel great about any of it. I think we've got better stuff coming up. He was, I mean, he put up 30 in the last game and he, he shot one for 11 from the field. So pretty good matchup for both teams. So I might, might revisit that one later today. Uh, next you got Denver, Indiana. Yep. All right. So I guess I'll start this one off real quick. Sure. I'm going to still stick with my take that Jamal Murray is on the verge of, 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 of being back to, to old Jamal Murray. Uh, he didn't put up the big, the big, huge numbers or anything in the last game he played. He's just been playing well. Um, and one of these days that's going to turn into a 30 real life ga point game, just with the way he is as, as a streak shooter hasn't, hasn't hit more than four threes in a game this year. And this is a guy who can go out there and make eight or nine threes. So I love him for large field tournaments. I just think that there's a really we're going to regret not playing him when he does get there. So at this point I'm sort of locked into to having to, to get some exposure to him. And uh, other than that, I think that Aaron Gordon is probably too cheap for the matchup, but we all know that Aaron Gordon is, is, you know, flip a coin with what you think with him. 
And uh, I, I'm good with, I, I'm, I'm fine with Jokic. I just probably will go with a different type of build today. And that will probably include a lot of Indiana. Miles Turner, uh, Jalen Smith, and Tyrese Halliburton, I think are all interesting. Uh, and I think you could do a little game stack here. This game's got a huge total. And uh, I, I sort of like those guys. What, what do you got here? Um, okay, a couple of things. Um, first of all, on the Denver side, I don't know if you even looked, but um, Jamal Murray is like under 6K on FanDuel. He's, uh, I think he's 5,500 uh, or some, something ridiculous like that. Yeah. Uh, he's still not showing up projections, which is just, you know, so much the better. You know what I mean? Um, Cause he's not, he's not a medium projection guy anyway. You know what I mean? I'm not interested. So mm-hmm. I, I like, I think that that's a really, really good play as well. Um, and I think it's one of those situations where even if you take the, you know, you take the 3000 off on FanDuel, I don't even think he's going to get owned over there either. You know what I mean? So, so, mm-hmm. uh, so I think that's really, really good. Uh, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to get to Jokic at 11 to six. Um, it's going to be going to be low owned as these guys are always are nowadays. It's, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, although I'm looking at a pretty high ownership projection on, on Giannis 12, four. I don't know why, but we'll, we'll get to that, I guess. Um, anyway, uh, on Denver, I'm not really getting to much except for like you said, the flyer on, um, on Jamal Murray. So I have a couple of things for Indiana. Um, First of them being, uh, I have Miles Turner as tied for the top point per dollar play overall on the whole slate uh, at 5,700. So uh, I imagine he's going to be owned and, and all that stuff, but uh, th- th- that's where I am with that. Tyrese Halliburton, as you mentioned, um, rates to be a strong play, um, yeah, a strongish play. Then Jalen Smith, 5,200, like you said. But I have one other guy for you. Um, I know who you're going to uh, say. Yeah, so so so, gotta gotta pronounce this right. But but there's a little there's a little little sneaky narrative in here. Um, oh, uh, so his name is I gotta find his name actually. What's his name? His name is Andrew N- Nembhard. Um, so I, I'm getting a I guess because he played 34 minutes his last game, I suppose, and he's 3400. He scored 34. 30 fantasy points. Um, I guess that's why he's showing up. Uh, and 28 minutes before that. So I'll need you to tell me who that is um, because he is showing up right now as a top 10 uh, point per dollar value for me. And I don't see him getting owned somehow. Uh, and that's obviously just not possible. In, so he's either not going to be as great of a play or he's going to be owned. It's just, you know, there's no free lunches here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't quite get, I think you thought, I, I thought, I thought you thought that I was going to say the uh, the other guy who we also like the um, Mal Mal Malburton not Malthurb or what, I keep forgetting how Mather- to pronounce Matherin. 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 Matherin, right? Like he's like the actual good player, I guess. But you got to tell me who this uh, who this Andrew Nimbahar guy is. Because, yeah, so uh, yeah. he's getting he he's he's been he got minutes because uh, with uh, no Duarte and with no uh, Neesmith. Now, Neesmith is coming back tonight, supposedly, um, and would potentially be starting. So he's questionable. If, ne- if Neesmith is out, I think he becomes uh, – his projections will pop if, his, if Neesmith is out, um, okay. it, way more than they are right now. If Neesmith plays, I don't think that, the, that there's much to do with this thing. And, and maybe you consider some Neesmith, but the truth is – You've still got the, the they, they, I mean, then they get crowded in the backcourt with, with, with Matherin and they're going to play a con on minutes and we already have a crowded front court for them. So they're actually like more healthy than they've been. I just, I think for right now, I think we just probably have to figure out whether or not Neesmith is playing and, and that would open up the the potential Nemhard minutes. But even those I feel like are a little bit in flux. I'd rather focus on the, the better guys. It's just the, it is hard to ignore that there aren't that many 3K plays early in the day, but my guess is we're going to find a better ones or this one is going to become a better one if, in fact, Aaron Neesmith is out again. Um, he's missed the last four games. So Duarte being out alone wasn't enough for him, but the last two games, you, they, they started letting Nemhart play. He played 27 and 33 minutes. Anybody at 3,500 should be in play for that. This is kind of a game that you're going to want to try to get right because it is it is probably a good game stack even if you don't play Jokic, I think that playing one of Murray or Porter on one side with Halliburton, one of Jalen Smith or Turner, the one thing I want to caution people about Turner is because of his wide range of outcomes in general, he almost like never hits like his median score. Like he put up 62 in the last game he played. Um, 
you really, really hard to play him when he's going to be popular at all, uh, just because he's got such a wide range of outcomes. And, and even Jalen Smith does somewhat too, because they have that, you know, a little bit of depth in that front court. Um, they haven't been playing Terry Taylor, but they still will play Isaiah Jackson, you know, what, 15 to 20 minutes. And they don't necessarily need to go super big outside of just Jokic. So they have three guys who are capable of doing it. And if Turner, I, I just feel like Turner in general, the rule is try to fade him when he's popular, try to play him when he's not, when he gets really popular, it just feels like the wrong thing to do to play him as chalk. That's, that's all I would say. But this is a game we're going to have to figure out who's, who's actually available before I, I can go any further, but it is a game that I like uh, as a potential game stack. So I will add, I mean, the, the sneaky narrative is, and listen, you guys, you guys want advanced content. I mean, this is, doesn't get any better than this. This is right alongside of playing Gavin Sheets because his name is Sheets. I mean, this is like legit. <laughs> this is like legit like stuff. So the first thing I looked at when I looked at Andrew Nembhard, if you look at this, it's almost kind of like calling to oh, my MBH. Username. Yeah. Almost like calling to my username on DraftKings, which is MB Habes. So it's MBHA. It's like almost getting there, you know? Okay, so I'm putting him on my literally list. Literally, the first thing that I saw when I pulled him up on my projection sheet is, oh my God, it's MB Habes. Um, so uh, listen, I've, I've played guys for much worse reasons um, than that. So he, he's he's going to get a percent regardless <laughs> of what. I, I, yeah, and, and he'll get a lot of percent if if, uh, if we That's hit Smith out again, I think. But I, right. I, I, I like it. That's I put right. him on my list now. That's right. There you go. <laughs> hey, if, if the other stuff isn't working, you know what the hell. Okay, yeah, so exactly. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, find um, anything we can. All right, moving on. Okay, what do you got? What do you got in this Toronto? Uh, huh, I, I, mean, I, I have it, I have the I have Detroit. Oh, I'm sorry. Next. Yeah, let's talk about Detroit and then let's talk about Detroit Boston. Sorry, all these 730 games threw me off. Um, what do you got, Sheets? Yeah, so so at the top of my list, as as usual, uh in this game would be Kate Cunningham at 7,500. I imagine this is gonna is a pretty healthy point spread, right? Um, but yeah, it's you know, Boston by I believe 10. Yeah, so all the more reason. I mean, you know, uh, oh no, sorry, it's 13, 12 and a half. Sorry. So Kid Cunningham is pretty self-correlating. You know what I mean? Like the, the better he does, the more likely he's going to you know, be in there at the end. You know what I mean? So uh, he has a good game. He's going to have to have a good game for this game to stay close, um, mm-hmm. I would imagine. So uh, I, I like him. Uh, and that's the only – I mean, you can talk talk me into Jaden Ivey a little bit, but uh, those are the only two guys I have going for Detroit. And Boston, the only guy I have that's rating to be good is a guy that – you know, sometimes I like him, sometimes I don't. But I think Tatum's a little bit – I mean, he's low-owned, but I'm getting Marcus Smart for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are the guys I like. I like Kate Cunningham. I mean, maybe Flyer on Jay Nivey, then Smart, maybe Tatum. But, but you know, that, that's what I have. Yeah, so an interesting thing about Smart here real quick is just that – it like the problem, like he's been, he's been putting up numbers lately. And I should have mentioned this before about Bradley Beal. When we talked about India and I'm sorry about Buddy Heald, Buddy Heald has put up 40 in like six games in a row. Uh, Marcus Smart has been, has been putting up numbers lately. So his projections has gone up quite a bit. Um, I, I still think it with the, with the triple, uh, well, you know what it is. I, I totally, I, I blanked on this. No, they have, they have Brogdon and white white should be available tonight. I've got him as in. Um, he's, you know, he's taking some minutes away from those guys, but you really kind of count the game on being close. So I probably wouldn't play a guy like smart unless I was going to play somebody from Detroit because you're counting on the game, him playing the the crunch time minutes and, and the game staying close a little bit. I, I would probably lean actually on, on taking a flyer on the blowout angle on a guy like Derek white, uh, probably wouldn't get to Brogdon, but Derek white at 4k is kind of interesting. And even though the minutes were were lessened, I mean, Detroit gets killed about half the time. And again, it's hard to know whether to predict a blood or whatever, but I do think Derek White is a large field play. And I think Cade Cunningham is an awesome play. You just had to hope, hope the game stays close. And I think Jaden Ivey is in play, but I don't think that he's a guy I'm going to prioritize. I really love his game. Um, I think he's really, really talented. And he does everything else in the court. He's a great rebounding guard. You don't need him to score. He, you know, he gets steals and blocks like crazy. Um, but I think it's just Cunningham mostly for me. And if I do play Cunningham, I think that's the lineup I would use smart in. Um, but I, I do like Cunningham. I mean, Cunningham at 7,500 is just when, when the games are close, he puts up, you know, somewhere between 45 and feels like 60 every night. 
So you just you just need the game to stay close. And I I'm a little skeptical that's going to happen with Boston uh, today. Just Boston at home is really really tough. All right, uh, let's move over to what do you got next? It's the uh, now I have Houston Toronto. Toronto. Oh boy. So the, you know we've still got for Toronto the the obvious no uh, no Siakam. <laughs> they raise the prices. Uh, I think the best play is Fred Van Vliet, and I think that you're deciding between Scotty Barnes and uh, Anna Newby. I think that Scotty Barnes will be the most popular, and I think Fred Van Vliet is the best play. That's all I have in this game. So um, I actually, at this early juncture, have the best, at least point per dollar play on Toronto is being Gary Trent Jr. Um, uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, and the other guys you mentioned. Uh, so there's Scotty Barnes uh, and Fred Van Vliet. Um, so uh, with, 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 with Siakam out, I mean, you would think that um, that Boucher would be just kind of in line, right? Mm-hmm. But in his last two games, I mean, we have, um, you know, uh, three fantasy points in 14 mm-hmm. minutes. And in 22 minutes, 21 fantasy points, and he's 5,300. Um, wh- one thing you could say is that, you know, this, what, a, what a tremendous troll opportunity. Right, if you can, if you can do mm-hmm. it now, but I, I'd like to. Um, but the other possibility is, what else happens? Do they start Precious or something like that? No, they always start like, Coloco. A Coloco. Yeah, they're, 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 they're too crowded there. in the front court, in my opinion. But, to really... but, but I, I'd, li- I'd like to. I, I hesitate to do this, but you know what? I, ha- I have to give it credit where credit's due because I never would have thought of this. But I didn't listen to it, so I will listen. I love all the other sites and whatever, and every once in a while I'll throw it out. I, I, I was listening to the Morgan Grind today, mm-hmm. and the guy there, I, it was not the usual group. I, I didn't really recognize the voices. The guy there came up with a freaking genius freaking idea, and I'm going to steal it. <laughs> and, okay. and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a look at it, that instead of playing Precious and all this stuff, how about they just go freaking small and play Auto Porter? And, they just and, never and do I, it. I think that that's a – I don't know, but I think that that's just a great idea. I don't know. Like just, okay. Okay. Uh, I just visualized it, you know, and, uh, you know, he's, uh, uh, he just came back. He hasn't really played these minutes or whatever it is, but I mean, if you tell me they don't do it, they don't do it. But, but uh, I don't know, against, against a Houston game. I don't know. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it another look, but it's, you know, it's so, it's so rare that when I'm looking, I'm listening to his regular content that I get anything unique mm-hmm. that it just kind of hit me. Like, Whoa, that's at least something that I wasn't expecting. Mm-hmm. So I figured I'd give it another look. So I'm going to give that a look. Uh, but I would like to say, uh, for real, that I would I would like to continue to play uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sengun. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know what his price is nowadays, but I don't think it really matters too much. Uh, 65. 6,500. He could he great. Can get, he can get 40, he can get 50, he can get whatever, you know. Um, and, and remember, with Van Vliet out, I mean, you know, it's more – more rebounds maybe for a Sangoon to grab, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like uh, the offensive glass. So um, he doesn't really project all that great, but you know, he, he, he doesn't really ever project all that great for me. So I don't care. I, 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 I like that. So I like Sangoon, like all those Toronto guys, but go, go back to, to, to Trent for a second, only because you didn't mention him. What do you think of him? And, and what do you think of he's always the same guy to me. Like it, he doesn't get the, the these, these massive boosts in usage without Siakam and Van Vliet. So we're playing him at 5,700, just hoping he has one of his good shooting nights and does a couple of other things. He had four stocks in the last game, four steals and blocks, and that sort of made him a valuable play-ish. I, 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 it's, it's, it's a good matchup, and he could always get hot, but it's, it's, it just feels like we're – I feel like people play him without Siakam as if that he's going to get this extra use, and they did it with Van Vliet too, and it just wasn't the case. It's just not, it's just not what he does. Um, he plays a ton of minutes. It's the kind of team you, you, you want a guy playing a ton of minutes against. I also think there's some serious blowout risk in this one. I, I mean, I would be actually surprised. I would be impressed if Houston stays in this one. Um, but I, 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 I'm less on. I'm less on it because of that. And and um, yeah, I, I, I just, I, I think the other guys actually get legitimate boosts and are better plays than 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 Trent. But again, I, I'm not gonna. I, I could always end up with him. You know what I mean? He's 5700, and I feel good about him getting 30. He never. He hasn't got 40 this season, and he's had these guys out 
pretty much the whole time. You'd like to have at least the 40 plus upside and he'd really have to shoot lights out or just get hot or something for that to happen. Um, I do think Shengun is, is, is a better play than I probably should have mentioned it. I guess I always just assume everybody knows I'm going to recommend him. I love this guy. Uh, first of all, he's 6,500. He's still barely, he's played 30 minutes in I think one game so far this year, and he's still averaging 35 fantasy points a game or 36 fantasy points a game. If, if this game does stay close and, and he go, I mean, he could really like, he can go off against anybody. It's not an ideal matchup. The bigs are actually defend pretty well for Toronto. But it doesn't seem to matter that much with Shengun. He just always is right there, and and he plays really well. He's incredibly efficient. Um, when and it was nice to see him shoot the ball a little bit more in the last game. But I, I really, really like this guy, and I just I think that the idea of just continuing to play him as as he does, like I said, he's averaging he's basically averaging more than you know what five point five x, and you know you can go go ahead and play him. I don't know if this is the right spot where it's great to use him, but I'm always gonna. He'll, if I was playing 150, he'll always be in like 10% of my lineup pretty much no matter what, um, unless there was some sort of pricing thing. But I, I don't know. I, I just, I, I, the, the, the Gary Trent thing is is fine. And, and maybe I end up with some of it, but because I like the idea of getting one guy from Toronto on whenever we lose Siakam or Van Vliet. But I just, I don't feel great about any of these individual plays at their prices. Um, Barnes and Van Vliet are still my favorites. And it and, and would be a two. All right, what do we got for the uh, Houston? Uh, sorry, for the uh, Utah Atlanta game. What are you looking at? Right. So uh, Trey Young is questionable. So uh, if he does not play, then obviously Dejounte Murray and maybe some others, um, you know, are, are strong plays. If Trey does play, um, I actually have Trey as kind of a fringe. Uh, uh, not even fringe. I think I have him as, as decent at uh, ninety nine hundred. Um, Utah is like all of a sudden like the like the 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 uh, the eighty three the eighty three Nuggets. You know what I mean? Like they're just it's just a fast it's just freaking it's like a pickup game with the, with these guys every freaking game. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I think I think Trey could have a good game in this uh, against against Utah. The other thing is that you know we, we really have to consider what 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 Laurie Markin is right now. You know, like is he. Is he is he like a, a seven thousand dollar player who's had a couple of you know good games, making him look like a nine K player, or is he like a nine K player being priced at seventy five hundred, only because you know we're just used to him being like at six thousand? I, I I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, th- this might be a game to find out. You know, I don't know. Uh, I I think I think the slate is too big for mm-hmm. me to try it. Um, so that's my my comment on that. So for me, it's probably going to be either Dejounte Murray if Trey is out. Maybe Trey if Trey is in, and I don't think I'm getting anything else from this game. Yeah, I um, I mean the crazy Dejounte has been unbelievable, by the way. Um, and without Trey, all they did was beat Milwaukee for the give Milwaukee their first loss by, and they beat him easily. They blew him out. Um, and Dejounte Murray lost minutes in that game, still put up 59 fantasy points. This guy is awesome. Um, maybe, maybe it's time people realized if you're, if you really want to build a winner for the future, I think Dejounte is a better player than Trey Young. I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry, guys, a better real life basketball player. Um, and I, I'm okay with any, but again, for fantasy and whatever, I'm okay with any, you play either of those guys. That's fine. This game is a cross off for me at first look. I don't see anything that stands out. And I think, I think it's a really hard question to answer with Markin and because, you know, they, they definitely seem to, to, to use him a lot, but like at the same time, it's like, he's got this crazy usage rate. He's just been really good. And Utah has been really good. They are, I think they might be first in assists uh, in the NBA. They've got a bunch of guys playing pretty unselfish basketball, spreading it around. Uh, Vanderbilt's questionable tonight. I just think this is a game that I, I just don't want to get, get involved in, or I would stack it, <laughs> you know, sort of like we were saying a little bit about the possibility of stacking. No one's going to play anybody from this game. So I, I and there's just too many other games on the slate I like better. I actually think the best play in this game might be Capella, but I, I just I personally would probably just stay away. All right, your Knicks are in Boston. Sheets? Uh, no, they're not. Then my Knicks are in Brooklyn. I'm sorry, your Knicks are in Brooklyn. Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah, this is a big big game for New York. Um, hey, I guess everybody from New York thinks which both these teams were better, um, but it's still uh, <laughs> yeah. it's still it's still it's still a big game. And I think everybody's going to put forth their their best efforts and stuff. I've heard some nonsense about Jericho Sims being a good player. I'm, I'm just – I don't think this is the game for that kind of stuff. Um, I will say that uh, 
be careful what you wish for, Eric. You just might get it. And I got my 30 minutes out of freaking Cam Reddish like I wanted. And it was good for a full nine fantasy points, <laughs> including how do, how do you play 30 minutes and get zero rebounds, zero assists? I mean, that is like the ultimate. I guess they just really have him standing in the corner. I, I literally think that's what they're having. That's all that he does. That's really, you're right. So that's, that's so, exactly you know what? what? Uh, you know what? So that's the, that's the end of that experiment. Well, actually, I don't um, know. I, you know, the, the truth is that if you're going to play a minutes, I'm always going to have, like, keep an open mind to a guy who's 3,200. The problem is they just run offense through so many other places. Um, Brunson and it feels like it's Brunson Randall all the time. And then when quickly comes in, it becomes his thing oh, and, and Garrett and Barrett. It just, he doesn't really have an opportunity to create. Um, so, so I would be off that. I will kind of take a mini victory lap on, on a half a percent owned OB Toppin the other day saying that if Hartenstein gets into foul trouble, that Toppin's going to go, he put up 36. Um, and we take we take our victory laps whenever we can. Can Let's I can I can it. I do that? And can I also suggest that maybe yes. going the exact flip side when Toppin might be popular? I'm, I'm going to have some Toppin in my lineups. Don't get me wrong. Oh, is that right? Top Toppin is going to be popular tonight. I think so. I mean, he's projecting pretty well. Uh, but you have to remember that there's the, they should give him more run. They did, and that had something to do with the foul trouble from Hartenstein, but also that he was they were playing better with him on the court. And then there was a the little bit of the blowout. They were kind of blowing Minnesota out, so he got a little bit of extra run. They still tend to, they tend to keep him about around 20 minutes, but he played 26 in the last game. If you give me 26 minutes, I'll, I'm, I'm glad to take him. I just don't know the, how guaranteed that is. Um, so I, I, I like I like playing one of Hartenstein or Toppin, though. Um, and I think Hartenstein's price might might be surprising to people at, at, at 5,800. I think in this kind of a matchup, this is the kind of thing where I think 40 is very, very possible, and he's going to be completely unowned as opposed to the other night where he was the massive chalk. I also think that Julius Randle has had a has had great games against Brooklyn in, in the past, and I don't see why this should be so different. The problem I have is that uh, he always looks like an incredible play and incredible value at, at at his price. the The issue is they just run so much of the offense through Brunson too. He doesn't have those you know ten the, 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 the triple double upside that we used to see from him. But seventy eight hundred, can he get to fifty? I think he can. Um, I like the matchup a lot for these for the Knicks here, and on the flip side of it. I I'm having trouble getting to uh to some of the Brooklyn stuff, but yeah, you, can, you can't get to Durant here. No, I think that you can. That's what I was gonna say is that I think uh, I think that Durant. It just it's weird. Eleven K to play Durant over Jokic in general for me, but I think you could possibly do it here and get away with it because you have the Knicks who are oddly enough the team that gives up the most three pointers in the NBA. So so that's a boost. Uh, it even brings guys like Joe Harris into consideration for me. Maybe you get the hot Joe Harris six three pointer right. game. But I feel like maybe these plays are a little bit reachy on a slate that's pretty large. Um, I, I do think an unowned Randall, an unowned, you know, Hartenstein, or even you could throw Barrett in the mix. The, these the Knicks play these games really, really tough. Even when Brooklyn was really good a couple years ago. Um, so running it back with with Durant, I certainly don't have a problem with. Uh, but that's pretty much Durant, and then maybe Joe Harris in large field stuff would be my only interest here. Joe Harris just still shooting reliant. I don't remember this 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 time you're speaking about where Brooklyn was good. I have to think back to this. Wait, well, the year uh, they went, went, they lost with, with the foot on the line to. Yeah, remember yeah, they were I sort of they, 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 they were good. them taking over New York and they had a they had a game where they went into overtime that I made it was one of my six figures. Well, I remember, I remember, I remember it. But yeah, know, it's, uh, Randall hit a big three. Uh, anyway, I, 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 I uh, yeah, they haven't been good for a while, but neither of these teams have been particularly good. You know what? F, F Kyrie Irving, F Kevin Durant. You know what I mean? Like F all of them. I yep, know. I'm with you on all that. Um, but I do think I do think Randall will be in some of my tournament lineups, and I really wouldn't argue against R.J. Barrett either. But I think that Randall's the better play. Um, personally, hey, here's a, here's an interesting uh, thing. I, I, I for those of you that don't know, you know, I put the true DFS projections up. I have like a minutes column over here, mm -hmm. and Kevin Durant is actually projected for the most minutes of anybody on the slate. He's been, he does. He plays a million minutes. I have him at thirty-seven point eight minutes. As I think that's. I'll take the over on that. By the way, um, and, 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 that, and you want to have, have this without without looking. I mean, it's, it's like a hundred way tie, really, for a second. But the but the guy who just edges out the others with thirty-six point five six minutes projected was actually Jason Tatum. But on the slate like this, where they're a thirteen point favorite, I would I would probably go for the under. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, I think that's fair. Um, I do think Durant's going to play a million minutes. As he always, I mean, he's played under thirty-seven minutes only three times this year, and I believe there were two of those were blowouts. So, uh, 
anyway, uh, I, I, I'm okay with it. I just, again, think we have maybe some better things to look at coming up. Okay. You have uh, New, New Orleans, think, Chicago? I don't, I, don't, I don't think in this game, though. Let me, let me see. Uh, so I have New Orleans and Chicago next. And just kind of scanning here, I, I'm not really seeing anything on either side. Uh, you, uh, I mean, maybe like a fringy Zion play. Zion was off to a pretty decent start um, the other day. I yeah. had him, and then uh, did he fizzle? No, he, he was fine. Fifty points. Fifty one. Yeah, yeah, that was good. I mean, how much more can I ask? That was a season high, right? Uh, <laughs> anyway, I said too much. So, so I think that he's re remains in play, uh, but that's pretty much it as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, this is a weird. I, I really, you know, it's a it's a great pace game that feels like we should have, want to have more interest. But I, I do have Zion as as a guy who I'm definitely considering, and that's my main one. I, I want to give the the boost. I, I think Zach Levine is a really good play here. Um, yeah, I, I just think at 7,400, enough of the time he's going to be able to shoot himself into a big performance, and it's a kind of matchup you'd want that to happen. So I I really like Levine, and I think he might, at low ownership, end up being a priority for me on this slate. Um, oh, wow. I, I really think that he's a, he's a strong play. And, you know, he's had these weird games. He had the... He had a lousy game against Boston. It's a hey, forgivable. It's very tough defense for them. He had the blowout game against Charlotte. But other than those games, you know, when they, when they, most of the games that have been close, he's been right in that 40 range and hasn't really gone off. This is, feels like a spot where maybe he could go off. So I, I do have Levine as a guy who I'm, I'm certainly considering. Priority may be a stretch, but I, he's definitely a guy at low ownership I'm, I'm going to take a second look at. So, and then rem reminder, this is the first look thing. We're going to have news later. So I'm just sort of, I have a bunch of guys who I'm sort of interested in and not, not a bunch of guys who I'm like, okay, well that guy I'm going to have in 75% of my lineups yet. Um, other than maybe, oh no, we haven't even reached the one that I'm going to have 75% of possibly. Ooh, um, all right. Milwaukee. Okay. See, this is an interesting one sheets. What do you think here? Because I mean, why is Shea Gilge Alexander getting his price dropped? If the game stays remotely close and that's a big, if it's Milwaukee, but it's in OKC. When the game stay close, he just puts up he puts up like a minimum of fifty every time. Why is he ninety one hundred? Why are they dropping his price? If they probably, I guess, adjust for playing Milwaukee. I guess, like you said, I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I like him. Uh, he's showing up as, um, yeah, he's showing up as a top top ten, top fifteen play, or whatever. I think what's really interesting again to me, which I alluded to earlier, is that I mean, this can't be right. I mean, I, I have Giannis getting like 27% like initial ownership at 12-4. I mean, and 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 Durant at Jokic like below 10 at lower prices. I I, I don't I don't see that universe existing. Um mm -hmm. uh considering also Milwaukee, I presume they're a 10 point favorite as well. I mean, I can't imagine yeah, I not. think that I've got it right here. It's uh I actually think it might be let's see. They're only a 6 point favorite. Point favorite. It almost makes me um, feel like someone's sitting or something. <laughs> oh yeah, you, no, no, there's no. Yeah, I guess I should have led with that. No Drew Holiday. <laughs> okay, so I guess this is why Giannis is twenty seven percent. I suppose. I don't know. Yeah. So, um, look, I mean, if, if you can find the, uh, the money, you can play Giannis and Shea in the same lineup, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and you could do that. I mean, there is value to be had, so you can certainly make that work. I'm not getting to pretty much anything else in this game, though. Do you like do you like them two together? Do you like Giannis? What else do you like here? Anything? Yeah, um, I, I think I, th I think playing those two together is is if we can get enough value is absolutely uh, something I would I would be high on doing. Um, I really like the idea of of I just I just want to keep. I, I feel like not playing Shea at this point is just it just feels silly. I almost like wonder why I'm doing other things because it's just s remarkable consistency. And never really going to hurt you unless they get smashed. Now he had a bad game at Milwaukee last time they played, but Drew Holiday ain't there to, to guard him right now. So um, I'm I'm a and I guess Holiday is still technically questionable, but I, I think he's actually closer to doubtful. So assuming that he's out, I, I do like the Giannis Shea thing. Uh, kind of weird what they're doing with Giddy's minutes. Not really sure what's going on there with that, but I think that uh, I would take a shot on Giddy too. I think that he's he's struggled lately as as Shea is, and I don't like playing those two together because they tend to eat into each other. But I think if you're not going to play Shea, I think that you you want to take a look at Giddy. So I have Shea or Giddy, and and Giannis as a priority actually on this on this slate. I just need to find the value to make it work. All right, so All right. I'm going to let you start with Phoenix, Minnesota, and hope that you. Uh, <laughs> we haven't spoken about this game, right? We haven't spoken about any game. So I'm hoping that you're going to address what I think you're going to address. And if you don't, 
then I'm going to do it. But I figured I'd let you try first. So go ahead. What do you got, Phoenix, Minnesota? If anything, any observations? Any? I don't know. The Damian Lee thing, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do it. Um, without uh, Chris Paul is questionable. If he's out, and again, we probably won't necessarily know that, but we might know before lock. If Chris Paul is out, I have, I'll just play Booker. I'm not even going to think twice about it. I also think that DeAndre Ayton has a case to be made. He's not a guy I like to play on big slates in general because I feel like he tends to get too much ownership and really doesn't ever produce fantasy wise. <laughs> like, you know, hardly ever. It's, it's pretty rare you get a, a good game from him. But I, uh, I'm open to it here. I, for me, this feels like a little, everything feels a little fishy with the, the Damian Lee projection. Uh, again, he's 3,200. So he's a guy we have to consider. He got the minutes the last game. I just feel like this is a, it's just a, a wide range of outcomes guy coming off the bench. I don't know. Something about it doesn't feel right. And I think he's going to have ownership. That's why I'm saying that. Uh, on the other side, it's really hard for me to get to much of Utah, honestly, uh, the way Portland? things are are you Minnesota? I'm mean, sorry, Minnesota. Why do I keep doing that? Oh, because go bear. <laughs> I see a name and I just go back to the old team. I really have a hard time getting to Minnesota here. Um, if I had to take a pick, it would be one of Cat or Edwards. Same thing I always say. But for Phoenix, it's going to come down to Chris Paul, and I think he's probably going to play. If he plays, I'm probably off this game without maybe a tiny bit of Damian Lee if people forget about him. But I don't like love the Damian Lee thing. You're just playing, hoping he makes shots. Uh, I could play Joe Harris at a thousand more, who I know is going to play the minutes no matter what in a great matchup. And Damian Lee could literally put up like four or five fantasy points. He's played over 20 minutes, three games in a row to, to, in his defense. He's also a guy who's just going to get there by a little bit of scoring. Uh, hope you hope he gets a steal or two. And I don't know. It's just not, not my favorite kind of guy to play. He's, you know, he's over the last three games when he's, and he still only put up 18, 16 and 23. And he's shot in those games a combined uh, seven for what seven for 11 from three. Uh, it's not, it's not an exciting play for me. Hey, you know, it's so funny that we didn't talk about it. So I thought you were going to do something different. Uh, you did talk about one of the items, but I didn't even, real, I, didn't even realize, I didn't even realize that Damian Lee was, it was, 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 it was a thing today until you mentioned it. So, so yeah, I, I just know, I just noticed as you were talking about it, that, um, that Chris Paul is questionable, but if he's out, then then yeah, Damian Lee's going to come in. I I don't really have Damian Lee projected all that great because I don't think that I'm looking mm -hmm. at anything, whatever. But the thing that I that that I, that you did bring up, which I thought that you would, um, is 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 every day DeAndre Ayton like projects to be this great play, and you brought mm -hmm. it up the last time, you know, mm -hmm. projects to be this great play and gets double digit ownership and literally has done nothing. I mean, like, like you, you look, you look, you look at his, his just his, his box scores. I mean, there's not a single game on his resume that gets there this, <laughs> at this right. at this price tag, and and he's, he always projects well, and he's he's always 15 percent owned, and you know, uh, whatever. So I figured that's what you talk about, and you did. Um, uh, but so yeah, if uh, if Chris Paul is out, I also agree that it's just you just play Booker. And and don't mm -hmm. get too fancy. I don't know about the Damian Lee thing. We'll have to guess. We'll have to look at it. Yeah, and 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 Booker, by the way, is is I guess in play anyway. Part of why I'm going to be a little bit like I have a bunch of guys who are like, I'm like middling on. I've only got three guys that I really like so, or two guys that I really like so far: Shea and and Giannis. Because we, we we're going to have some games in a minute that I'm that I'm going to like a lot better. And we spend a lot of time talking about these ones, but. I, I really think that the, the, the general strategy of, of late stacking is good anyway, but we also have two two games that I think could be really gold mines um, at the very end here. And uh, this isn't one of them. <laughs> um, <Not> one. <laughs> Memphis, San Antonio, is that what you got? Yeah, the only thing I have, I mean, I, well, you know, I got two value players here. I, I have um, I have Vassal at 6,500 and I have Sohan at, at 3,800 for San Antonio, if that, if that helps. Um, but that's pretty much all. What are they doing with Devin Vassell? They brought him off the bench the other day and he played less minutes. Then they put him back in and he played 34 minutes. I, I can't, I, I just can't do it with, with the Spurs. They're just driving me nuts. Sohan, they still aren't, they, you know, he, they, we had the, the pop narrative of saying like, look, he's just been sitting and doing nothing. And, they, and it, you know, the minutes sort of trended that way. He played nine minutes in this first game back and 22 and 24. He did get it to 28 in the last game. He's cheap enough to where he should be on our lists. But certainly nothing to be overwhelmingly excited about. The Spurs are fairly healthy. Um, I actually think that the, that I like them. I, I like the idea of 
if you're if you're not going to spend up on the other guys, I think this is a really good matchup. So I, I would I, I don't think there's anything wrong with playing Jaw at ten one. Uh, Bain at seventy seven is a little higher than you want to pay, but the guy's really good. Uh, and the best projection play is going to be Aldama Concher combo. If if Adams is out, they become even better plays. But I kind of like the idea of maybe playing Adams. So I just feel like I, this is another one where I just have a bunch of it's a really high total. I have a bunch of meh plays, like guys who I'm fine with, but don't feel overwhelmingly like I need to play. All right, um, let's move over to the uh, two-hour gap between the last games. And, and by the way, playing these late games could end up really paying off if you get like a Chris Paul out or something and you want to play the expensive guys. But we don't know what's going to happen with the Lakers here tonight. <laughs> so um, I think that Davis plays for what it's worth. Uh, I think LeBron plays. And I think that takes Westbrook out of the consideration. Uh, they got killed the other night. He still he got there in twenty. Westbrook, by the way, was really good the other night. It just was the rest of the team was 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 god awful. Westbrook actually, you know, shot eight of fourteen, two out of three from three, and put up thirty seven. And he only played twenty four minutes. Um, he played. He had thirty two fantasy points in the first half. Yeah, and 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 he he and he only and in the first half. I think he only played fifteen minutes. Like, um, and then you have. Paul George on the other side in a, in a, a, you know, a, a little bit of a rivalry game at, as a price that we don't usually want to play him, but John Wall is 5k and he's projecting really well. Uh, I think Zubach against the Lakers, he just crushes us every time. I like the idea of getting some exposure here. I just don't know exactly what I want to do with it. I think, I think I like the idea of taking a shot with wall. Um, and I actually think it might be better than a shot. I think that this might be like a really strong play, uh, in the long term, I, 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 he's looked good in limited minutes. The minutes have been trending in the right dire direction. Uh, this is a good matchup for him, obviously. I, I, I'm on the fence, but I, I right now I'm leaning Zubac is my favorite play here and Wall is my second favorite play. And then with the Lakers, it really is hard to do. But if there's going to be, if you want to throw a LeBron, Paul George lineup out there, I, I not only wouldn't fault you for it, I think it's probably a good idea if you're playing 10 lineups that I certainly would have at least one that I did that with. Um, that's where I'm at on this one. How about you? Yeah, I'm probably passing on this game unless it's some news breaks with the Lakers. You know, I, I, uh, I think that, uh, I think, you know, listen, I think that, uh, it is, it's a rivalry game for both teams. Uh, I think you're going to get all the, all the good players playing except for Kawhi who just doesn't play basketball anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then, uh, um, I guess the Clippers are going to win. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Um, but I don't know. It'll probably be actually. That's I shouldn't say that. I mean, if if if, if all those guys play, what's the, What's the spread? Pick them, something like that. No, it's it, it, the Clippers technically the home team, which makes them a three and a half point favorite. Um, Whatever. Maybe. Yeah, I, I, I think the Lakers are totally have a good shot in this one. Um, yeah, so and, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 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 off this game actually. Yeah, yeah. I I I also want to throw in though the the, the if you're going to do like a little if you're going to do the LeBron Paul George thing. I think it's a good idea to get like a little bit of Patrick Beverly exposure. Uh, 4,400 is a nice little value you can add. And you could even, I mean, I wouldn't play wall and George together. I don't think, but I think, I think that there is some, there's some argument to having a game stack here. These teams play, play each other close. Um, and you know, it's a, it's a, it's a game where I could see LeBron putting his best foot forward. I guess I'll put it that way. All right. This game should be a, uh, I love, I love whenever we get Cleveland in a, in a, a really good pace game. And I want all of it. <laughs> um, I, I want exposure to everybody on Cleveland starting lineup. My number one play is Darius Garland. He might be my favorite play on the slate. Uh, I don't mind Kevin Love off the bench. Uh, I, I can't ignore this guy, even in limited minutes. And it always feels wrong to play guys who don't play the minutes all the time. This guy just, I mean, he put up 50 the other day in 23 minutes. He put up 35 in the last game in 25 minutes. And they're always going to play him in the like low 20s-ish range. Um, Evan Mobley, uh, I, this is it's starting to get cheap enough. And in, in this kind of a matchup, I think this is like, like a, like should be an automatic six X. Um, I love Jared Allen against the, the front line of, of, of Sacramento who just, you know, can't guard anybody. So I really want to like get some exposure and I'll probably just have like a, I don't know about a rule, but I'll, I'll definitely, I, I can't imagine hand building that. I'm not going to end up with one player from Cleveland in all my lineups, especially because they're in the later game and. You know, I'm trying to. I'm. Oh, I'm still trying to backload. You've got Malik Monk, who's actually questionable, looking like the best value on the slate, and that scares me because he is 
uh, th that certainly is a little thinner than I would count on. He's got massive upside. Uh, he can he can ten x this salary. He just did it in the last game. So I, I'm 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 good with with taking shots on Monk. I, if he gets a little too popular, maybe maybe you jump off. But as of right now, hard to ignore like the the upside and the value and being in it being a later game. So guess who the, how about this? Who has the highest? Who has the best field goal percentage in the NBA this year? This is going to surprise you. Uh, Moses Brown. Brown. De'Aaron Fox has wow. been unbelievable. And all this to say, as unbe as unbelievable as he's been, the fantasy production isn't at eighty nine hundred. Not not the most exciting play in the world. Um, so I'm I'm you know I, I don't know if I want to go there, but I, I I would like to get a run back in this game other than just the the, the chalky monk. Um, and I think that, you know, for me, I think Sabonis is, is going to put up plenty of fifties, uh, in these spots, even in a tough matchup, because you're going to get Jared Allen and Mobley would be a tougher matchup for him because he, maybe they'll do that even because he, he can bring him outside and shoot the three, but he's not shooting the three this year. So it's like, I, I like the theory of the Sabonis play better than I like the actual play. I like the idea of playing De'Aaron Fox every game because he's been so great, but as great as he's been. They, these guys cut into each other and the assist numbers are going to be down for Fox because you've got Sabonis. They run a lot of the half court offense through. Um, so I'm just a little bit like, I, I know I'm going to play some Cleveland. I might force it I, because of that I'm going to end up with some monk. Um, and I might end up with a little bit of Kevin Herter. That's the only other guy who I, I'm looking at, but I don't, I don't love it. It's more just a backloading kind of a lineup type of thing for the Sacramento side. How about you? Yeah. So I didn't quite get as much of uh, the overall game uh, stack as, as you did, I have, I have, you know, the two main plays really standing out, uh, uh, at least as far as the projections, the numbers go like Monk and Garland. Mm -hmm. I didn't quite get to all the rest of it, but as far as like theory goes, I mean, if you want to, if you're going to play like the chalky, you know, best plays of games and they're certainly on opposite sides of the game. Um, you could, you could fill that in with all kinds of stuff, you know, um, and, and make that work. So Considering it's also a late game, I I support that. So let so let, let let's go back and talk about who you like again from the Cleveland. So you like Mo, you like the regular guys, like you like Mobley. You like yeah. In order, like Garland. I would have Garland, Mobley, um, uh, Kevin Love, Jared Allen, and I will I would I will absolutely throw in a Donovan Mitchell lineup. Um, it's just it, it is, we all know the guards what they do to this this the Sacramento team, and, I, and Sacramento has been better this year statistically. I just watched them give up 126 points to Orlando the other day. Um, and we know that Donovan Mitchell has a ceiling that he can get to 60, but he's the least, he's the guy I like the least. I really, really want to prioritize Garland and have him in, in at, right now. I have him, I'll probably yeah. have majority of my lineups. I would probably, if I like ran a, uh, a build right now, I'd probably end up with like a huge amount of both Monk and Garland uh, yeah. in there. Yep. Um, and I also would like to say that that I do think that if that monk has huge chalk is kind of a limit uh, in general. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I can't really prove that, but, but, but I just, just based on my, and this is one thing that again, no one's really done the work on yet is to just track how these guys do as chalk, you know, how these guys doing everything kind of sets up for them or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just have to, the back of my head, like him failing his chalk more than I would like to remember. Um, yeah. On, I, on, a, on, a, on an enormous slate. You know, so we'll have to see where the owners, I think at the very least, you know, if you, if you play him and things aren't going your way, um, you know, somehow I'll try to try to ziggity zag. I don't know what you're going to do, how you're going to do that. But, but. Um, well, my thinking is you get a few guys and things are going to open up. I'm hundred percent sure. We've already got question, questionable tags now just downgraded for Nurkic. Like there's going to be things that happen. That every time you delay a little bit, you might you might end up like, with something. Like, like I'll give you an example. Like if things aren't going your way, and you have Monk at, at forty two hundred, and you need something, whatever, just go play to like Terrence Mann at forty one hundred for the Clippers, mm -hmm. something like that. You know, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's a. Uh, I mean, he's got thirty points and thirty fantasy points his last two games. That's not so bad. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I, I actually, actually think that's not the worst idea in the world. Anyway, we didn't talk about that, but um, Terrence Mann. At forty one hundred, he's not really projecting all that great. Well, right been, now. That's because he's he, you know he had no he, no wall the last game, so he got the. Oh, okay. He's okay. only been like when everybody's been healthy. When the number of guys who have been playing, he he well he's he's gonna be he's usually like around fifteen to twenty minutes because okay. they play Kennard, they play Norman Powell. Actually, okay. the, right, the right thing to do would be to switch to Norman Powell, not 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 a. Okay. 
a little more expensive, but um, I think he's a he's a stronger play than than. Uh, or maybe go to John Wall at five K and make that work. Yeah, yeah. Then and you have some flexibility. I, I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot to open up. So we will be live at yeah. five Eastern. Hopefully, we'll have some of that news by then. I, the only guys I've got right now as priorities. I like the Indiana Denver game. I like the Cleveland Sacramento game. Even though I can't figure out what to do with Sacramento, so I really just have Cleveland circled. I think Portland Charlotte is going to be a now, especially if Nurkic is out. Uh, that could be a really, really good game for Lillard. And you could probably do some things on the other side as well with Rozier, as you mentioned earlier. But my my priority plays are Giannis, Shea or Giddy. I think will, will be in my lines, probably Shea. And Garland is my favorite priority. Cunningham, but it makes me nervous about the blowout. That's Those are the guys who I have. In I've, 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 got, I've got two other guys okay. that we didn't mention. Um, again, what I like to do is when, we, when you go through this, I look at like my top 20 values and see if, we, if somehow we forgot to cover any of them. Mm-hmm. You did mention Buddy Heal, but there's two guys coming out of that Milwaukee game that um, you know with with Drew out. I just figure it would be worth mentioning. One is a guy who's like really tough to play, but George Hill is 3,200. Yeah, that's um, a tough one. I don't, I don't know, whatever. But then you have um, Javon Carter at 3,900. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, you know, if you want to do any more deep dives on those two guys? I mean, let's the the the. Doesn't all go to Giannis, right? With with Drew Holiday out, I mean, somebody first of all, someone's got to pick up the minutes. Um, and uh, Drew yeah, Carter so will are, he'll he'll be in the thirties in minutes, and 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 George Hill, that's just a really tough one to play. It is. Um, it is. I think the actual best answer is the guy who unfortunately doesn't isn't priced well enough to where we can probably play him. Maybe on Fanduel you can, but this could be a big Bobby Portis game. Mm. That, that, that's, that's my get weird play on FanDuel. I'm definitely going to have Bobby Portis. I have four four lineups in the 222 today. Bobby Portis will be in one of them as of right now. Um, but it's going to be a tough slate. This is this is a really tough slate. So uh, look forward let to me, let me jump on, let, me, let, me, let me look real quick at, quickly at FanDuel once once more. Yeah, and the other guy that um, on FanDuel that we didn't get to that's showing up is, um, boy, once again, uh, Royce O'Neal. Um at 4,800, small forward and power forward eligible is showing up a little bit better for whatever reason. Uh, 4,800 on on uh, on FanDuel. But I think with both – oh, no, Kyrie's out. Um, yeah, so he's the only guy that I didn't talk about that showed up on the FanDuel. Yep. Yeah, I think there's a couple other guys that look like good value. Like Horford's fine. I, I feel okay about that, but I don't feel like excited about it. You know what I mean? Um, so it's going to today. So today will be the day that uh, the M behaves uh, for Indiana. Uh, you know, he wins you them all the money. Doesn't seem like the guy that can win all the money. You know what I mean? Well, he he seems like thirty fantasy. He's like a guy that can win some of the money, or, or set it up for <laughs> somebody right, else. Right, right. Some of the money, you know. Fair um, enough. Like the guy who wins you all the money is the ten K guy. The the ten K Paul George somehow goes off for like eighty or something. No, like, but like like Malik Monk is uh, he's forty two hundred. Right? He could he could legit score fifty. But he know? can't like, win the money all for you because everybody else is true. him. <laughs> that's true. So uh, I would just reiterate, by the way, uh, I'm looking at Fanduel again, that Dwight Powell does look to be like if you're going to play that slate. You know, it does look to be very strong. Power forward, eligible at 3,600. And I will throw in that I will play Maxi Kleber instead of Dwight Powell. There it is. That is. The old old, old conversation. Dwight Powell always projects better, and Maxi Kleber gets gets you four or he gets you 35. (laughs) All right. right, Well, good luck to everybody, and we will uh, see you guys at 5 Eastern.